rolling. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the angler fish. This cracks me up because people are always telling me, I say, oh, you say every fly is your favorite, but this fly is truly one of my favorites. Um, this fly, you know, you, you, you have habitual things that you do that just, you can't get away from them. And I mean, for me, like, uh, you know, first light in the morning, I'm a white boogeyman. I just, it's just things I do, you know, last light, I'm on a black dungeon, blah, blah, blah. When things aren't working, I don't know what's going on. If I'm stumped in any way, this is the fly I go to. This is a fly I go to with almost any new water I'm on. It's, it's just, and I don't, it's just funny because this whole fly started out as a, it had nothing to do with fishing. This is one of two flies I've ever designed that had zero to do with fishing. I wasn't thinking about fishing. I was actually watching this show on Benthic, Benthic Zone and Deeper Fish, and it's called an angler fish. And it hangs this little fluorescing thing over in front of it. It's like a bad hat tainted out like this and these minnows come up and to that light and they eat it right and so like with all my flies I sketched it which I doubt you'll be able to see but it was right there like this and you know I sketch all of them and so right I was saying I, I sketched this fly and I just wondered what would happen if it condensed down into a fly into a, like a mini angler fish and it was it was just different it was just I mean, I, I literally was just sketching away, and it was just my mind's thought of what this stupid-looking fish under at 15,000 feet or wherever the hell they are uh, down would look like as a fly. And so it's got a lot of things going on. It's a really fun fly to fish. I This is one of the few flies that I actually wait in the front and put lead eyes on. It has a really long attachment. I like the attachment to actually be close to an inch and a quarter long it has it's just this thing's made to do a lot of things and and, and i'm going to walk you through it as we go it's a pretty simple fly the back hooks just uh two stacks of mirror it's a i call them flapper tails it's a tail that i don't i don't stack the marabou i palmer the marabou uh i think palmer marabou breathes better and this is supposed to be i've got it back here this one's a commercial tide not exactly how i would do mine which you'll see I do. I like this. I don't want this to touch. I don't want it to look like the same fly. I want it to look like something hanging off the hind end of it, right? <clears throat> and so I have no idea why I put the, the hackles in it. The hack has got a hackle on each side here. I don't know why I did that. I think it was supposed to be its hands reaching out. It doesn't have any hands. I don't know what the hell it was. And so the rest of it's just kind of <clears throat> however it, and this is one of those flies that and I've had very few. I tell people, say, oh, my God, you know, you design a fly and it goes out and catches fish. It's, that's BS. I would say that 70% of my flies would not catch a starving trout in a pond with a night crawler attached to it. you got a lot more failure than you've got wind. This is one of the two or three that right out of the vise, no changes, was exactly, I don't know, it just it doesn't look like anything, so it doesn't have to, it just does its thing. So... Dying dog. <clears throat> so anyway, we're gonna go. I'm gonna walk through this. And we'll do it as we go too. But just this, it's a pretty simple, a pretty simple fly. It's got a, a 1640 back hook. It's a ring eye hook, short shank. It does nothing but carry that flapper tail. Front hook is a 2460 uh, one aught. You can see it's a long shanked hook. The bot, the back end is just marabou. You know it's. I'm going to use, you know, you can do it either, I use two colors on this. I use orange for the center, but I like this sunburst yellow. I don't, you know, you can see it. Regular, you can see the difference in the colors. I mean, it's, it's just, they're just different. This is just standard yellow. This is kind of an orangey yellow. I really dig that orange yellow stuff. I put in a lot of my flies. A lot of my blondes have that in it. And so as we move forward, it's going to have a little bit of hackle. I'm going to have, I'm going to have, I'm not going to use thick hackle um, I use I use neck hackle on my thing so we did a, a fly the other day and we showed that that I, I prefer to have anything that's like an antenna or any lateral line like that like on the silk kitty I like to use neck hackle you don't really use these up here that much for uh, much anyway so you know not many dry flies use that big a hackle uh, I like the shine on that stuff too I, you know I don't like schlopping and duller colors on these things and then we're going to go, I'm going to have a little bit more marabou right here to cover up. We're going to have a little bit of fire tiger, flashaboo, 
The body is simply UV polar chenille, this olive brown. I love this stuff. I use this in a lot of stuff. My triple dungeons have it. All the menage -a dungeons have this UV polar chenille. I love this stuff. <clears throat> There's a one little turn of hackling here, which is going to be, uh, this is MFC's Bard Schloppen. This is new. Uh, just came out this year. This stuff, it's, it's a man-made barring in it. And so every one of them is perfect. This stuff is incredible. I'm starting to use this for a lot of stuff. Uh, it's just got, and, and this is big, it's kind of hid. So, and a lot of my flies, if I'm going to see, if I'm going to look at the barring, I like natural stuff. I, I mean, I like, like, you're never going to top you, uh, nature spirits, uh, natural dyed stuff. It's not possible. If I'm going to see it, it's like really show up like Johnny's kill whiteys when he puts his tail feathers in. I, I really dig that natural, but this is, I'm using this stuff for almost everything else. So then we're going to have two separate, uh, legs in here we're gonna have a and this is where I have no idea like I was tripping or something like when I came up with this because it's got orange and gold legs so the orange legs I have no idea where that came from and then I decided it needed some gold chrome put into it I have no idea where that is either just it just was what was going on at the time and then I got the gold these are yellow um, MFC's gold sparkle eyes I love these things. that's and this original eyes too uh, MFC started producing a lot of this stuff, Montana Fly Company, and I've, I've switched over to a lot of their stuff. So get him out of the way, and we'll get on this thing. <clears throat> these these twenty four these sixteen forties, I mean, have a, a a little bit of an offset to them. They're kind of off like this to one side a little bit. Uh, I like it. I, I don't think it's I don't think it's that big a deal. If you don't like the offsets, you can straighten it. Uh, sometimes I straighten them out just sitting here tying anyway, just because I look at it and think it's bent. I just bend it. It's real simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a small... I don't want this... I don't... A lot of times when you see commercial ties, they'll have a little bit... They kind of overdress their stuff because they want you to think you're getting more, I think. I don't know. But... The, I don't want a lot of this orange to show through. I don't, it's, it's just supposed to be an accent, but that's, you know, and again, like with anything, you pick up your, if you don't have one, if you don't know you're tying, you pick up your fly and you say, okay, use it for, just look and see what you're going to get for a tail. You know, what, how long, how short. This one, I don't care. You, it, whatever it comes out, it'll be fine. But what I do like to do is have this tail, and the only way to do this is to show you how to do it with the, a regular mirror because we're going to palmer these marabouts. We're going to do two of them. You don't quite get enough with one, to my way of thinking. I mean, if you got a really huge hackle, that's great. You might get, you might be able to do it. If I get one in here that's really good, generally I do two, but if I have one that's really thick, I might just move forward and use one. But I want to show you something how you're going to gauge this because I want a little bit of that orange to stick out the, the tip of that tail, right? So, I'm going to put this on here. You just got to put your hackle up and see how long it's going to be. You just kind of get a judge. You know, you put it like this. I'll put it on close up here in a second when I get it finally. So you can see. So now I hold it there and you can see that that's back. That's how long it's going to be because I'm going to palmer the thing. And that's too far. I only want it to be about a quarter inch back there. So it tells me where I'm going to tie this in. It's, it's not that big a deal if you screw it up. It's, it's all going to show up and this is going to go dead center of your 1640 in your back hook. We're going to put our hackle on here. We're going to wrap that forward just so we don't create any bumps. <clears throat> nice and tight. Now we're going to come back here. I'm going to take this one hackle and we're going to tie this in by the butt stem down here. As with any hackle, you're going to come underneath. You're going to come from the bottom, from your right side. You're going to bump your thread. You're going to catch that hackle nice and light. You're going to come around to a figure eight. All right. Make sure this is where you want it. Give it two turns and tighten it down. You won't twist your stem. <clears throat> if, you, if, you, if you try to tighten that, hey, that was fancy. Caught that thing. If you try to tighten that really, really tight right out of the gate, you'll end up twisting your hackle and it just won't lay on there properly. So now I'm going to just. I don't even need that. 
get your hackle off to the right side. Make sure that it's not going to get trapped. We're going to come in here. And I do this different than most people because I just don't trust marabou. It's just such a thin stem. Just keep massaging that out of there. Keep it nice and wispy. Get up here halfway. We started at the halfway point that was left. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet your fingers, take a th your thumb and your two first fingers. And what I do is I come back and I actually make nice tight wraps right over top of this. Just clean it up. I come right back over top of it. And I basically go back almost to where I started. And the reason I do that is because hackle, if the marabou stems are so thin and weak that if I get one tooth in there, it, the whole thing unwraps. It doesn't matter. I just, I'm, I'm going to cover it up. You can see how it's still nice and loose. Come back forward. My one third, you can see that's coming back there. Come back. I'm going to have half of what's left. I'm going to put one more in there. I'm going to accelerate a little bit forward, but I'm getting what I want right now. It's I want a nice wispy hackle for this. You don't want you don't want a really thick base to these. You you'll see it come up in here. You don't want to use that. You want to get right in here because it's just it's flutter. You're just trying to get the thing to roll around. Again, I mean you can see where I'm starting. I'm right dead in the center here. I'm gonna come back just a little bit. Hit one, so your hackle, you come back here, bump your hackle, your stem into the thread, come over, do a figure eight around that hackle, do two in front of it, just like you do your rubber leg sets, pull tight, go right to the eye, and you're going to take this stem right, this is one of the times when you're going to take this hackle and you're going to, you're going to, wrap it right to the eye because you're going to pull your fingers and you're going to wrap back over top of it. So, don't do what I just did. Wow, that's the first time I've ever made a mistake trying to fly. Maybe. At least in the last minute. <clears throat> I was doing a seminar one time and I did a... I can't remember if I did what I just... I didn't set that right where I want it. I did something. I, I broke my thread. I was in Sacramento. There's a lot of people there. I broke my thread and I go, wow, that's the first time I've ever did it. And the guy in the front goes, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the last minute. Okay, so where's those pliers? This one might need them. So make sure it's off your shiny sides to your right. Get your hackles down to the side and just advance forward. Nice even turns. Like I said, it doesn't have to be that much hackle on here. It has four turns, I think, maybe five. Probably could have got away with three. So, I'm going to come in here, break that off. Now I've got a nice wispy, all that hackle everywhere. I'm just going to come in here, stroke that back, and then go right back over top of it. Nice even wraps. And now that hackle is nicely secured. It doesn't matter what goes on back there. You're never going to cut through this GSP with a fish, a tooth, a fish tooth. So build a little head, finish her off. By the way, you've all heard me talk about GSP. You don't cut GSP. You always see me hit it. You take your scissors and just put tension on it and cut it like that. If you sit and go like this, you'll you leave frays all over the place. Okay, so now we've got the back hook done. I would take a little tiny bit of head cement. Uh, just, I like lacquer. Um, and it smells good too. And I'm just going to take this stem, get a little. Make sure it's not in the eye. Down she goes. Okay, now we're going to have this 2460. This is a long hook. Okay. So, we're going to come up front here. 
This one's not as critical as a lot of them, but it, I still suggest always that you, pardon me, I forgot something. I'm not used to uh, waiting. I got 025, and I'm going to put 15 turns right in front. Hey, give me a... That's going to be... This is a jigging fly. This fly is designed to... I mean, I, I do a jerk strips with it. I do slow pauses. I do... Mostly I jig it. I try to make this fly do this. It's long pauses. I don't, I don't jig it like a vertical jig. So I put 15 turns on here of lead. Now I, I digress there. So I'm just building a little bit of bulk underneath here with my thread. This is really just habit. You don't have, you're going to go back with your wire on here anyway. So now I'm going to take large, the dumbbell eyes, wherever they went to, these MFC dumbbell eyes. I'm going to take the large eyes, one, two, three, roll it over, one, two, three, don't worry about where it is. And what I was saying before I forgot the lead was just take your fly and see, just set your sample fly. See if everything's where you want. I want to end up with two turns of hackle right in front of these eyes. If it was three or one, you know, not that big a deal on this particular fly. So, and just like always, you can see these things are just loose. I'm going to come back and I'm going to hit these with my, I'm not, I don't care what they do right now. I'm going to come back here with my wire and I'm going to catch all that. This it should be, your lead should end dead center. It should be right in the middle of the hook. It might even be a little bit forward because I'm going to put my rubber legs here and I'm going to put my uh, turn of hackle. So, back to this. I'm using 0.38. 19 strand beetle on and this is one where I like this to like I said I want this to be about an inch and a quarter back inch to an inch and a quarter and I'm not worried about it it, it, it never wraps around the hook it's a it's a flutter tail it really doesn't there's not enough weight to make it do anything so I've got to have enough that I can get up here wrap back for you know both pieces forward just take a long piece I should measure this and tell you, but it looks like it's about seven inches or so. So there are no beads. I never put a bead on it. Um, I actually use the darker wire usually on this one, but this one's the silver. I don't really think it makes any difference whatsoever. So as always, you give that a good tight pull because what we're trying to do is get that little bit of a hinge right there a little bit of crease I mean and then we can set this we're gonna come in here we don't care you don't care what you do right now you you could have this way back here because like you know you've got to learn to manipulate this stuff around to get where you want it if you want to for consistency if you're a you know one of those like your stuff exactly exactly for whatever you know i say it's an inch and a quarter and you want it that way great i'm going to just kind of look at it it's that's about where i want it but i can show you one thing is i want i'm going to cover it up we're going to have you can take just a regular hackle regular marabou and i'm going to tie in i'm going to do a cover with this but if you looked at it i mean just sometimes if you just look and you go Okay, I don't want it really to touch. I don't want the I don't want these things to be the same thing. I want that to end right at the eye of the fly. And if you looked at that, let's just say it was in tight like this. You know, if you looked at it and you said, "Wow, that's really stubby. That's really short." You know, if it, if it looks good to you back further great. I'm going to go about an inch and a quarter. Just make Johnny get me a tape measure and see how close we are. Guys don't like tape measures. Okay, here we go. We're going to go forward. Just like always when I set any eye, I'm not worried about the top. I'm going to come up here right before you get to the eye. A couple turns. Drop these through. We're going to secure our eyes with the two pieces of wire. <clears throat> come forward. And we're going to go right tight to the eye. These are tight wraps. And you're going to come under here and just 
put your thumbnail into it and pull that really tight. And the reason you pull it really tight so it doesn't go, so if you don't pull it tight, you look in here, you might not have enough room for your uh, tippet. So you are going to have to fish this thing. Now again, go as close to the eyes as you can on your fur as you're coming back. And then I'm as tight as I can get right there, right close to the eyes. And now I'm going to go over, I'm going to make one or two wraps, and I'm going to pull that back to my right, and I'm cupping those eyes with this wire. And so that's what's going to help, it's going to hold those in place. Now we're going to come in here. <clears throat> I did two or three pulls and I pulled tight so I've cupped that wire. Now I'm going underneath the shank of the hook and I'm just doubling that up. I'm just tightening it even more. Just there we go. Now I'm coming right back. You can see the wires on the bottom. I'm eliminating those bumps where the lead was. I'm going to come just past that a little ways. Pick up Johnny's scissors. Cut it and then put them back in Johnny's tying kit. All right, here we go. So we should have, yeah, that's good. So when you look at that, we got about an inch, inch and a quarter, hanging back here, nice and, and that's your that's your flapper tail. That one's just back there doing nothing. So now, and you can see on the lead, I'm gonna get the body to here to the side. And if you wanted to, you could put a drop of uh, glue on this right now. With lead eyes, they it it squeezes into the lead. All right. And I mean, you can actually pull so tight that you can cut lead eyes in half. These are brass or stainless or whatever. You know, there's a whole bunch of, there's aluminum ones, there's brass ones. These are brass. These, it's really hard to get it really tight. If you put a little drop of glue on it, it'll hold a little bit till about the first rock and then it'll just be wherever it is. They aren't going to, you could turn these. It, not very easy, but they're, they're pretty tight. So I don't, I'm not going to use a lot of flash on this. <clears throat> I just want, I got the fire tiger. I just want to make sure, look at this stuff. I want a little bit of that. There's there's four or five colors in here. I want that gold, or I mean that uh, orangey, I don't know what, it's kind of orangey copper. So that, just, I just like to see it when it's in there. This one's got two in it, that's fine. And I, But I don't, this isn't a real flashy fly. This is, I'm just gonna cut a little bit of this off. I don't, I'm not even sure on the first ones I put it in there. And this, I'm not going to let it hang back very far. I'm going to put this on the back side, let it roll. Let it roll over there on the back side of the hook. And then I'm going to get it on one side, hold it, and I'm going to come about two thirds or so in here, cut them even, about two thirds back into the wire. I'm not going to, I don't want it hanging back like normally I would come right back to the eye. I, I just, this doesn't play a big part of this fly for me. So now I'm going to take, fold it back over like always, get this stuff out of your way, put your scissors on the back side so you can see how long it is. You cut them, they're both the same length. Now we're going to take, this is a good spot right here for, uh, it's a good use. I, you know, I, I talk about this stuff a lot. I'm not going to do it here because I forgot to grab it, but it's a good spot to take two things. You can either do this cover connection with marabou, which is what I'm going to do, or oh, I'm real happy about that. Or you can take the aftershaft of mar of your of these big old feathers and they should be just about perfect to cover it. I'm going to use the marabou, but I, you'll see a lot of times when I'm tying I'll I'll, if I, you got to go through and dig to find the right one, but if you go in here, it's a real sexy when you're using this barred stuff. You can come in here, and it's usually about the exact length you need to make a cover up for just on the base. I already picked out that marabou, so I'm going to use it. This is olive brown. By the way, I've done this fly in two or three colors. I'm going to use two, two of these to cover because this is a complete cover. And you're going to see I'm going to come back just shy of the eye of the hook. So I've got one on one side here, and I took a whole plume, and it's not very heavy. Come in here, and I let it roll halfway around the hook. Okay, I got another one over here. And I started to say earlier, but I kind of got ahead of myself. 
This is a great place for woolly bugger marabou. Woolly bugger marabou, the shorts, they're just a full stem, but they're only this big. Man, you can put one on there and it's a, it's a great cover. It's a fast cover. It's a good use for woolly bugger marabou. You know, it doesn't really have much other use as far as I can see, but um, it's great for these covers. So now I'm going to take this one, put it on the back side here, come around, catch this, and basically just cover it so that the same length. I'm going to take this marabou and I'm going to wrap it up to where I had the where I had the wires ending. This thing's being a pain in the butt. Let's stay back here. I think I've used up my material clip. So. That's a little ragged over there. Got that end sticking out. Shabby. Okay. Now, got to put our antenna in. <clears throat> As you can see, they're tied in in the front hook. They're tied in right here. I'm just going to pick a couple of these. And like I said, these are neck hackles. And it's a good neck too. It's a this is a dry fly neck, and I just want two that are pretty close to the same, which I had till I dropped it. <clears throat> and these, you need to be able to see this back hook, and so we can go. I want them to go just past, just barely past, the end of the tail. So we're going to tie him in there. Just going to get a rough idea. Make sure that's nice and tight. So just barely pass. And just once you get it set, just establish it, clean it up so that you don't. Some people don't like to, and in a lot of people you'll see when they're tying in tip, when they're tying a hat, I'll show you how to do probably the proper way to do it. So that's right there. Instead of stripping those off like this and it's clean if you go in here if you're worried about it i got a long tie in here you see a lot of people do that where they want to they leave those stems sticking up and it helps adhere the fly the thread to the fly with this fly i've got a long tie in i don't really think it's that critical but it's there on this side so if you see me on the river and you say you're missing one of your tails, I'll say, well, it was probably the one I didn't do right. So there it is hanging back. Nice. Now, UV polar chenille. Love this stuff. Hated it when I started tying with it. Absolutely hated it just too chaotic shit I mean it's just stuff everywhere right and I was like oh man this stuff drives me out of my mind absolutely love this stuff now put it in so many flies <clears throat> so again with, I'm going to tie this in I'm going to bring it up right up to where that wire was I'm leaving my space right there that's where I'm going to tie my legs in remember I said I got a little bit back I'm probably going to tie it in right there. I want it dead center. Ooh, look at that. I nicked my thread. I nicked GSP. I don't know if you can break GSP, but you can nick it with your scissors. There. Crises overted. We hate to have a thread breakage in mid-wrap. Okay. Now, just like with anything, this stuff, you know, chenilles of all types, they're two wire, you know, dubbing brushes and all that stuff are two wires. You put them together and, and they turn. And if you use a drill, you turn clockwise. If you're using your hand, you almost always turn clockwise. So when you work with this stuff and you want it to be, if you back that off about three turns, just up here in your hand and give it a stretch, you can keep it more or less on one side. If you just let it go random, it's going to trap itself underneath. And I'm going to wrap this just like always. You're still going to have to fight it. You're going to have to manipulate it a little bit. But on my first one, like everything I do with every material, on my first wrap, 
I'm going to put that in. I'm going to hold it so I don't spin anything. And you see how far that stretch. You can actually see the stuff stretch. And that's my first set. That's my big anchor. Everything's going to be in place. Keep it nice. You know, we're just watching that to make sure it's not trapping the stuff. When it does, back it off one way or the other. Come in here. And you can pick this stuff out later, too. It's not like, you know, it's like a dubbing, dubbing brush or a dubbing loop, however you're going to do it. All right, now I'm going to build a couple extra turns here because I, I want it to be have a nice base. And I'm going to do, some people don't like to do this. I, I, you can either cut this off right now. I'm just going to pull it back here, get it out of my way. Give it a couple turns, <clears throat> and I'm going to cut it off. And everybody likes to cut their, they don't like to do this step. I find a bigger pain in the butt trying to wrap the other stuff and then come forward and not trap it. And it is for me to just run in here and grab that and cut it off and go all over again. So I'm going to have, this is where this, this, this stuff is so consistent, this MFC barred stuff. You can see it's, it's pretty, it's man barred. It's, it's very... Jeremy's yelling at me, get that shit out of the way. It's just, it's got a really clean, it's probably out of focus, but it's really clean barred, and it's good. Like I said, if, it, if I'm doing stuff that's got to be really visible, I'm going to have natural, but I, I, I like this stuff. So I'm going to leave a little bit, uh, just a little bit of the fuzzy, not the way into the aftershaft where it's all mirror buoy. I'm going to leave just a little bit, a couple of turns. I like that fuzziness. I'm going to come in here. And the reason I put this behind it is it just helps lock the legs in a little bit more. It's just they don't fold back quite as much. Right turn, left turn, right shoulder, left shoulder, I mean, come over it. <clears throat> Hook your thing, your hackle stem, give it two turns in front, tighten it down, simultaneously tightens everything down. See how my hackle is still setting exactly where I started. If you go in and tighten on these hackles without doing that figure eight, you have a tendency to spin your hackle. This this feather's never going to move. So in there, don't cut it off like I did before. Okay. Now, no set number. That's one. Nice, tight. Two, three. That's plenty. I just, I go by what, I look at it and I go, yeah, that's plenty. It's just, there is no, if it was a skimpy little hackle, I'd have done four. This one had, this one's really thick and so I did two. Maybe three. So, come in here. We get a nice base right now. Now I'm going to take my <clears throat> back to these. I got my orange uh, gold plate. I'm going to have my gold chrome. These things are, I have no idea where these came from. It takes two orange bard and one gold. I'm going to put the orange in first. I don't know why I don't do them at the same time, but for some reason I don't. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure they're the same length. And I did a really subtle figure eight. I have no tension on my thread. You've seen me do this many, many times. So it came right, left, left, right. Now I do one, two, right in front, simultaneously pull down. My legs are completely locked, just enough pressure that they aren't going to break and they're setting exactly where I want them. Now I'm going to take one more. <clears throat> I'm going to go right over top of these. I don't know why. Sometimes I tie these in at the same time. I don't know. The first time I did it, it's probably why I came up with a gold one. I, the first one I did, I went, huh, I want something else in there. And so I did it. I did them separately. So now you can see when you look over top of this, you can see the figure eight is dead center top, right? I even stacked them, and it's still dead center. The legs are doing what they're supposed to. They're not off to one side. They're setting nice and high, and they're nice and puffy. Now we're simply going to, believe it or not, we're almost done. I'm going to tie this back in. Just because, like I said, it could have, I could have left it back there and pulled it. I, I don't know. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I'm going to just, one more little extra secure, take that. 
This is a money bass fly, but for those of you who fish smallmouth. All right, now we're going to go in here, and we're going to get right in front of that eye, of those legs. Don't, don't trap them somehow. Just get right beside them. Everything's going to make sure they're where they belong. And just come around. It's a good place for your straw if you... And I'm going to build this up. I want this front bigger than the back. So I'm going to give it a couple extra turns here. Every fourth or fifth one, you see I always, same thing, come in here and cinch it down. See how that stuff stretches? This isn't a cotton core. I'm going to do a figure eight on this. I want two over the top. Just like that. Now, see that stretch? I'm going to do it one more time on a close-up. It just It's really critical because you can see this is set cinching down. Watch when I pull that on close-up. See how it sets in about a quarter of its length? Come in. That's kind of setting it. It's, it's clinching it down around the hook. So and then I caught it while it was clinched down. Don't knock it off. Bingo. So, come in here, build a little bit of a head. Doesn't take, build whatever you want. I don't put much of one on it. <clears throat> Bingo. So, got my pile. We'll get back here and we'll set this up nice so we can see where everything is. Get your legs off to the side. Find your. Where is everything? One thing about tip hackle too is if you, if you were out there and for whatever reason you thought those are too long, you can always come in and just nip those off of there, no problem. Wouldn't hurt a thing. I like them just like that. <clears throat> Got a crazy leg here, hence the name. So, now. If you wanted to, you could pick them all out. I don't I don't bother with it. This is the angler fish. <clears throat> As you can see, it's pretty it's pretty random. It's uh it's not really designed to look real clean. When it gets wet, it's a little bit more not quite so chaotic. <clears throat> but when it gets wet, it'll all shrink down like that. I'm pretty sure the two things that make this fly what it is, and, and this has truly been my absolute savior fly. When, when things, when I can't buy a fish, I go to this fly. I mean, instantly, and it's just, it just saved my life so many times. But what you'll see is it's, you can see here that this hackle, or this, this cover is not coming into it. It's just gonna flutter back there. I think the two things that make this fly really fish is this tail, the way it gets wet and it flops back there, it's just hanging around. And when this UV polar chenille gets all down, it's very translucent. It looks, it'll look like it's about that thick with almost no weight. It's a really light fly. Even though I got 15 turns 025 on their lead, uh, when it's all said and done, these things segment out. It's almost, you can see the segments in it. The legs are really sexy with that. You can see those things a long ways away. You'll see, you'll see it out there 20 feet, and you'll see that gold just kind of boof, boof, just every now and then. It's really cool. It's been, like I said, it's been a savior fly for me. I try to jig this fly more than I don't just strip this fly. I, I've done both ways, but it, it tends to work best for me in a long, slower retrieve where it's just kind of up and down. Really gives that tail a chance to do this. This is, like I said, my go-to fly. Hope that helped you out. Thanks.